the longest United Nations climate talks on record have ended in Madrid without a key agreement. Negotiators working through the night try to find a compromise deal on the question of increasing the global response to curbing carbon. But no agreement was reached over the future of global carbon markets. Now, I'm joined by Sheena Rada, who's the co-founder of Extinction Rebellion. Sheena, thanks a lot for joining us. Um, Antonio Guterres, he has um, tweeted since this all wrapped up in Madrid, and he said he's disappointed with the results of that meeting, COP25, as it was called. And um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, there's a disconnect, which is what he's been pointing at, because the truth of our climate reality as reported by mainstream scientists, mainstream climate scientists, it has not been able to be embraced by, by the process. The truth is that um, we have less than 10 years now to transform our systems so that life on Earth is able to continue. And this process has not met what is required for life to continue. So. It's very sad, and yet I believe that there, there is a new conviction and there is that people have come closer to the truth. Um, when you think about Professor um, Johan Rockstorm and his, um, his gift, let's say, to the science last week um, and to, to making people understand or to allowing people to understand the billions of deaths that we could be looking at as he projects a four degrees rise in temperature and what that will mean for climate shocks and people's vulnerability and therefore um, the deaths that will ensue, then I think people are starting to, to, yeah, to understand that we're looking at catastrophe. At if people are starting to understand, probable. sorry to jump in there. Sorry to jump in there, but if people are, are oh, starting to understand, as you say, I mean, why do we have COP25 being the longest on record and no agreement on carbon markets? But I think that's why it was the longest on record. I think people are very confused. Um, I, I don't think it's um, a process that can deliver at this stage of its, you know, of its growth, of, of, of its assembly so then of what's how the, the point mechanisms... Of these What's the point, then, of these annual meetings? I mean, they must cost quite a bit of money. They happen every year. People fly in from all over the world. What's the point of them? I, I think the point is to create relationship and to try and build trust. It takes a long time um, when nation states have been suspicious of each other to build a forum where one can reach any kind of agreement. And, and, and still it's not there, right? It's, it hasn't happened. Um, it's got to happen for 2020 in Glasgow, and we're here, Extinction Rebellion, are committed to making and helping and facilitating that to happen. But but it's it, it's worthy in that respect for, for building trust and relationship. Um, let's talk about um, Extinction Rebellion. You say you're going to make it happen. How are you going to do that? And what have you done so far to see that happen? OK, so... We're, we're going to do this with people in collaboration with many, many forces and many people who know and understand that systems have to change and transform themselves this year. And we, we, are, we are putting forward, um, we're consulting on a process of three global demands, which will, which will sit around our UK demands. And the, the, the global demands will... One of them is, is based around a carbon zero future by 2030 and a stop and a halt to biodiversity and ecological loss. And we would like um, this to be embraced by, by those delegates, by the people that are, that are representing these nation states from across the world. And we still believe that this, this can happen. You know, humans can change. Humans are amazing. And we, we own genius and we own brilliance. What we don't own yet is conviction. And, and, I, and Extinction Rebellion, I think, has changed the conversation about what that could be, what, what kind of truth we need to embrace so that we can enable action. Mm. Um, many would argue that what you don't own yet is the political conviction, and that's really where you have to work. Um, what sort of tangible difference have your protests made 
in driving that political conviction to making tangible changes? Um, look, the political system is, is broken. Uh, we haven't made that difference. I'm not saying we've made a difference in, in the political system. The, the commitment to a climate emergency in the UK is a nonsense because aiming at 2050 for a net zero future and without the repair and restoration even being mentioned um, gives us a 50% chance. Maybe that's excluding um, some of the key science that has been excluded. Maybe gives us a 50% chance of survival. Who wants to take a risk like that with your life? Who wants half a chance to live? So, but, but the politics is in a straitjacket in this country. Politics is not owned by the people in this country. And, and we have to face the truth of that. It, you know, we, we, we're, we're really at the, the, the edge of finding um, where truth lies and illusion begins right now in this country, especially after our election this week. So, so you know, I don't think it's true that we've we've been able to affect the politics. Not really. We've been able to speak to politicians by causing some disruption, but we've not affected the politics of this country. OK, Sheena, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. Now, a key vote will be held in...